Hey guys, this is Danae. Um, I'm coming to you today because one of my subscribers um, emailed me and asked me to make a video about being a minority um, and being a PA. So today I had an interview. I did receive the job. It was just for a per diem job at an urgent care, uh, just to fill you guys in a, a little bit. So I'm a little bit tired. I'm just coming off of like a two day stretch. So please bear with me through this video. Um, so yes, my subscriber asked me about um, being a minority and being a PA, the process of uh, like kind of being a minority in PA school and then that transition to practice as well. So I will say in PA school, I trained in Boston as um, some of you guys know. Um, Boston can be a tough area um, for, I, I think Boston is an interesting place. I'll just leave it at that. Um, so on the clinical front, you know, I've gone to, um, I've been in the OR, uh, been kicked out of the OR by the surgeon for no reason. Um, so that's one thing that's happened to me. I've had nursing staff, um, assume that I, uh, am not a student and I wasn't there to learn, assume that I was a, um, um, a salesperson, like the people that go into the OR to sell you tools. Um, I've been in the ED and had nursing staff order me um, around because they thought that I was a CNA. Um, I've walked into patients' room and the patients have said like, oh, are you the social worker? Um, and in those times, um, I think a lot of those situations uh, were pertaining to what I looked like on the outside and um, these condition biases that people hold in their head um, that they might not even be conscious of. Um, and I remember I was at the VA when I walked into a patient's room, I forgot my cell phone in his room. He was the sweetest man, he was like a 90 year old man with a GI bleed. And um, I walked in to see him and his roommate said, oh, who are you, the social worker? And he turned and he was like, no, she's my PA. And he was just like beaming and it was the cutest thing ever. Um, but those experiences are going to happen. Um, also, when I got kicked out of the OR, I was really fortunate that I had um, a, a wonderful resident with me. Um, and he kind of took me under his wing after that experience. And he took me to work his surgical case that day. He was a really sweet guy. Um, and he was just so frustrated because he's like, everyone should be nice. And I'm just like, in my head, I was looking at him. I'm like, you need to calm down. It was um, a white guy from Ohio, um, super sweet. Um, but these things do happen. Um, I had a colleague that uh, she's a black American and her preceptor is a, a black African um, and was an MD. And so they both went in to see the patient and the patient made a point to tell them, well, black women don't practice medicine. And this um, classmate of mine, even before going to PA school, she had um, a master's from Johns Hopkins. And it's just like, these women are more than qualified. We sat, we took our boards just like everybody else. Um, but these are some of the things that you could face. Or I think everybody's experience is going to be 100% different um, as well. And someone asking me about being a minority, this is from the perspective of being um, a black woman. You know, if you're an Asian man or an Asian woman or a Hispanic or an Indian, all of your experiences are going to be different than mine because we all look different. We all have cultural um, differences. So it's not going to be exactly the same. And also within the African diaspora, uh, like a black, black is is such an umbrella term black is a race but within that race we all come from different places or you know have spread out through the globe so my family is from the caribbean so i was born in america but both of my parents are jamaican uh so i consider myself a caribbean american uh, i was raised by two caribbean parents but i'm a black person in america also there are Africans, um, there are um, Caribbeans, there are Afro-Latinos, just, just everybody. Like there's so many different people that fall under black and culturally we're not the same, we're, we're different. Um, so that I think that also um, goes into your personal experience as well. Um, 
let's see as i transitioned into the actual clinical field outside of my um actually one more event happened to me as a student and it was actually um oh yeah i i, I was at a rotation one of my preceptors um made a point to reference my my race when i was having difficulty with a patient and just saying like oh he probably is treating you that way because he you remind him of his mother or his sister so he feels like he can treat you a certain way i don't know it was just just random stuff like that or you know being another instance that happened as well was on a different rotation i was sitting down just trying to eat my food just trying to have a break and this person really wanted to talk to me about politics about health policy which i can totally speak to especially at, at that time um i have a bachelor's in public health so i was really into health policy um you know i was one of the people that knew a lot about the affordable care act um in more detail than the average person um and really wanted me to talk about like racial issues and you know things that their kid is working on in school and her kids doing a report on this and i'm like lady i uh, she was a nice person but i'm just like i just want to eat lunch i just want to eat my sandwich i was in a mess at that time so i couldn't eat my rice and peas and oxtail but i'm like i just want to have my sandwich uh, i've been seeing patients all day clinicals are overwhelming enough i don't need to hear about you know i i can't speak for the black race like that's not my job and i don't want to do that i just want to eat my sandwich so you'll you'll definitely have experiences like that and then transitioning to um my role as a clinician i think there has been um, both positive um, and um, negative. I was really fortunate to start in the Bronx where we're so diverse, like we have nurses, our nurses wear braids. I had a black a female attending and a black male attending and then there were three black women PAs that were there when I first started. So I really, it felt nice because I didn't, I didn't feel like, you know, I was the only one there, especially in a place where uh, there are only 3% of PAs are black. So I was very fortunate to be in a, such a diverse um, environment and, and I loved it. Um, so that was one of the best things never questioning my hairstyles um no one ever so if you if i showed up to work in cornrows nobody would even blink at me i would get compliments oh today your hair looks great blah 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 um so also with the patient population um sometimes people think that all of these um all of the adversity comes from non-black people or white people um and just because you're non-black i guess that doesn't Autom you're not automatically white but anyways from people that are not black um and that's not true you know going into work people don't per assume that i'm their provider sometimes they'll think that i'm the nurse or um you know a lady saw me walking by and she's like i need my diaper changed and i was like okay i'll let whoever is taking care of you know and um and she's like aren't you aren't you a nurse and i'm like no i'm not a nurse and then she's like well you're a tech then so can you um change my diaper and i was like and then this was happening in front of uh, patients were surrounding us as well so this happened in the open and i was like i'm not a nurse i'm not a tech um i don't know who's taking care of you but i'll find out and i'll send them over so that they can help you with that um because I'm one of the providers here and I just walked away and there was a young black woman behind me watching this situation unfold um so I've had things like that even coming from the patient or after seeing me um and then I'm at the point where I'm discharging the patient and they're like well aren't I going to see someone else and I'm like nope I'm it this is all you're getting um so people don't even after me introducing myself they don't understand um, but then there's times where people, you know, they're um, savvy to the medical field, they know what a PA is, and they've said, you know, I'm so proud of you, we need more people um, in medicine in our community, I'm, I'm happy that you took care of me today, and I, I received great care, this is the best experience that I've had here at this hospital. 
and that feels amazing or one day I had a little girl um, give me a hug and she said when I grow up I'm gonna I'm gonna be like you so it is really po there are positives to being a minority in medicine and there are negatives um, you just have to kind of frame your mind of like you know what you've you're, if you're a minority, you've always been a minority. You're born black, you're going to die black, you're born a woman. That's questionable. You could be, you, you can change that, you know. Um, but for me, I was born a black woman, I'm going to die a black woman. And my sister always tells me, Danae, your only obligation in life is to stay black and die. Those are the only two things that you have to do. That's it. And she's right. So, you know, being a minority, um, I would just really say there's positives and there's negatives. And those are the cards that you're dealt. And focus on the positive. Uh, focus on the positive that you're bringing into your community. And um, I know some ethnicities are highlighted with positive stereotypes, but I feel like the black community is plagued with negative stereotypes and if you can be a positive um, role model for someone or a positive example uh, why not and if you can call attention to someone's um, bias that's even better you know when when you can stand up and say you know that's not my role I'm here as a provider I'm here for this um, when you, but the one thing I will say is sometimes you are in this state of con like proving yourself um, people don't take your I don't know it's like they don't take your word as being good enough even though you passed your boards just like everybody else um you're using sound medical judgment it's like aesthetically you don't meet, meet their expectation of what a provider looks like so therefore anything you say is not valid um and you're not going to change you know you're not going to change anybody else's mind and that's not your job so um i would encourage people to focus on the positive and you know you shouldn't be abused you should never be in a situation where you feel extremely abused or you feel extremely uncomfortable um, because of the things that people are saying to you um, but I would recommend just taking everything with a grain of salt growing some thick skin I'll always say the best medical experience I ever had was working as an ED tech I think ED staff um, emergency department that's what I mean when I say ED emergency department staff is like some of the most abused medical providers hands down so that experience I've been called every name you can think of um, once twice three times and then again so there's nothing that anyone can say to me at this point in my life in any venue that is going to set me off you can't tell me anything that i haven't heard before that's how many you know being a black woman there's every slur imaginable whether it fits you or doesn't fit you you're going to be called it and i, I in an emergency in medicine you might be uh, dealing with patients that are um, psychotic or acutely ill um, from different backgrounds some people can just downright be racist um, have bias like all of these things happen so that experience of, of being on the bottom of the medical hierarchy um, was I a hard experience but an experience that I needed to have to really thicken my skin because life is real when you're a minority life is real but none of this is to deter you uh, from being a PA I'm a PA I'm happy I'm thriving you know I have a wonderful work environment I have great patients and great co-workers okay nice seeing you guys